Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wrong to Strong Chicago. I'm your host, my name is Omar Calvillo, and tonight I have a guest, his name is Joshua Hernandez. Uh, I, I met this brother through through our church, he actually leads uh, the youth ministry at our church, uh, and I know uh, he, he's been like a huge blessing to the youth, specifically to my son. I, I don't know, I, I think I shared this with you before, but uh, uh, my son went to a, a, a youth retreat. And uh, you were there, I think you were leading, you know, one of the leaders there, and uh, he came back excited. I, I know you, like, uh, ministered to him. I don't know if you prayed for him or something, but uh, he definitely came back, like, uh, hyped up. So I just want to thank you for that, brother. Oh, uh, man, no problem. Praise God. Hey, Amen. You know what would be, uh, I know we're going to get into your whole story, but how, how long have you, have you been doing this for, uh, the, the, with the youth, like, working with the youth? Uh, at Cicero, uh, going, it's about a year and a half. Okay. I, jo I joined back, um, uh, fall retreat after the the fall retreat for the one youth that's when i really when i started so it's about a little over a year okay so eventually we're gonna get into what, what led you there you know like to want to work with the youth and all that yeah, yeah. all right oh but yeah you know that there's there's a lot that this brother's into you know uh we're gonna get into it uh he does some boxing he does a little bit of music uh, so you you guys want to hear some of that music? You guys got to stay uh, tuned in, you know, to, yeah, towards the end. Yeah, you know, yeah. God, God willing, we will probably get there. But uh, we're, we're gonna go to the beginning, uh, brother. If you if you want to tell us, you know, what part of Chicago you grew up in, maybe if you could name the neighborhood and yeah. uh, if you could paint a picture of how that neighborhood was like when you were growing up, like, like when you were young. Yeah, uh, I grew up. Well, I lived uh, in my grandma's house. So with my parents for like three three years four years by by sandoval high school where hernandez uh middle school is now uh and then my father bought a house in the midway airport area um and we moved in there and i went to nathan hale uh bulls prep so i i grew up in majority of my life was in midway the, the midway area okay yeah. Now, how, how was that, like, uh, area, like, when you were younger, like, uh, like as far as, like, uh, the neighborhood, like, for you growing up? Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's funny, because when we first moved in, our neighbors had the police watching our house. So, we moved in, you know, Latinos moving in. Uh, it was a lot of retired cops and firemen in the Midway area. Um, but I remember my father noticing you know, the police officers watching our house. And one day he actually walked up to the car and knocked, knocked down the window. I was like, yeah, I live here, you know. <laughs> and eventually they left, you know, they just left us alone because um, they just, we weren't, you know, causing no trouble. Right, so. right, right. It just looked, looked suspicious, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was me, my mom, uh, my, my pops, and then, you know, eventually my other two brothers came. And we grew up in that house until... I was, uh, man, until I started high school, probably. Got and it. And we started to move around. Okay. So now, now, how were things at home, like, like growing up? Was mom and dad in the picture, like, as, as far as your, your family? Yeah, you know, my my mom, that's a somewhat sensitive topic. Okay. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you can share as, no, as yeah, little yeah. or as much as you want. Yeah, with, man, my, like, with my mom and, and dad, I love them both. We, you know, we had our struggles like every, every family yeah. does. But, uh what brought us through is that the love we have for one another and th because of Christ, because of my relationship with Christ and things like that, um, everything is forgiven yeah. and, and moved past. And I love my parents and, and that's all on that topic. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, I, I know you mentioned, uh, through Christ, you know, all, all that, like is forgiven, yeah. but th this is like later on in life, right? That, that oh, this stuff happens. Okay. Man. Okay. Yeah. I think so, uh, as a, as a kid, you know, you don't understand what's going on right. in your environment or your surroundings. Then you get older and then things start to make sense. Yeah. Then you go through this this wave of emotions and then you have a choice. Yeah. And the choice is either to forgive or to let let it soak in that unforgiveness. Yeah. And when you soak in the unforgiveness, the only person you're harming is yourself. Yeah. So for for me, it was very, very important to forgive and to to just strengthen that relationship with with both of my parents. And I think that you know we're better now than right. we've ever been. So. Gotcha. Now, um, without getting into that, like uh, I know you mentioned the unforgiveness. So, 
Uh, would you say when you were younger, maybe teenager, did that, I mean, those emotions, well, how, how did you express them back then? Was it anger, frustration? Like, Well, I would resort to um, being to myself a lot. I didn't, I didn't really hang out with a lot of friends or, or things like that. I, I mostly s spent a lot of time alone and, and like with cousins or, you know, when I could with brothers, but that's why I got into doing so much stuff. Okay. Right. Because I was always alone. So I was a curious young kid. I started writing music when I was in third or fourth grade, my mom would find raps no that, way. I would, that I would hide under my stereo box. And, um, you know, boxing is something I've been doing since, since I was, you know, five, six years old, but I was just, I was more so, uh, curious in those things because I was more quiet reserved right. because of the environment. Gotcha. And, and even like that sport of boxing is like an individual, it's yeah, not, it's not a team sport. So, like, if you're already finding yourself like okay with being alone, yeah, I think. Um, and I didn't play. I played one year of baseball, one year of uh, basketball in high school, and I ran track and cross country for f three, four years. And that's an individual. <laughs> yep. So, so naturally, I I gravitated towards the individual stuff, and it, you know, it's not out of arrogance or out of pride or selfishness or anything it was more so that's what i what what i've always known is to figure things out and be more reserved gotcha yeah no no i know you mentioned like in the like by yourself you being able to be okay now did you have siblings growing up brothers sisters yeah so i have two younger br brothers giovanni and justin but then i also have swift who's my older older brother which he's my cousin but that's my older okay. brother Damn, we don't it don't get any closer than that that's gotcha my, that's my guy man um yeah i can't i could sit here and brag about him all day but that's my big brother okay no yeah yeah hey, no 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 uh staying on that topic is he somebody that influenced you somebody that that you looked up to as like you were growing up like of course um i would go always go to him for advice there was many times my music music i listen to um is heavily influenced by him heavily influenced by other cousins that were making like reggaeton at the time um so yeah i think as a kid you kind of want to be like the people you surround yourself with you know and when i when i wasn't alone i would surround myself with them gotcha. so when i was with them eventually you're like ah, i want to do what he's doing right right now, hey, how, how old are you right now? I'm 28. 20. What, what, what year were you born? I was 95. 95. Okay, yeah. man, man. 90s, 95. Yeah. 95. I was in uh, high school already, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, well, that's another reason I reached out to you, man, because I had no but old people on here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had another, uh, I had a guy, he was on here. We're the same age. I'm 45 years old, you okay. know? Okay. So he's on here. He's like, man, yeah, I'm trying to reach the youth, and they, and they call me an old head. I'm like, man. Oh, we're all his now. Hey, like <laughs> you, you said it, not me. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like man, you know, I gotta have somebody young, you know. But uh, yeah, definitely get into your story and uh, just to, to see how it was like growing up, like for your generation as well. You yeah. Know? So okay, you, you said you're young. So when you're writing these raps, like, like what year is that? Like around two thousand? Like man, uh, probably two thousand three. My okay. first, my first album that I asked for for Christmas was Fifty Cent. <laughs> So my f my father bought it for me, the clean, the clean version. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was listening to 50, listening to Eminem, listening to um, Tribe Called Quest, to Big L. I was more of a New York hip-hop yeah. head, gotcha. gravitated towards the East Coast. And yeah, that mu music was, was uh, it's still a, a, such a strong love and passion of mine. Gotcha. So that, that that's what it was in the beginning. You know, with me, this is going to tell you how old I am. It was Run DMC, man. <laughs> they, they, I remember it was uh, back in the, it had to be mid-80s, late 80s. Yeah. And I went, I don't know if you ever heard of the store Montgomery Wards. It was an old store. Okay. Uh, they had a big barrel full of tapes back then, cassette tapes. And I grabbed it and I seen them. They had their Adidas jumpsuits. They had their gold chains, the Kangos. Yeah. And just by looking at it, I'm like, man, these guys look cool. I grabbed it, bought it, and man, that was a uh, Run DMC tougher than uh, leather was the album, 
And man, from there I would have been hooked, like uh, and on rap, you know. So like uh, I remember back then it wasn't that popular. Yeah. Uh, back in the uh, 80s, they, they used to like uh, make, make make fun out of me. Like, oh man, you want to be black, you know? Because I was the only guy I'd be going to school with. Uh, you know, you remember pu- Public Enemy? Yeah, I had my Public Enemy T-shirt, like baggy. And, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I was that, all like, that style is coming back. Yeah. But uh, back then it wasn't p- popular, especially I don't know why. Like in Pilsen, it wasn't until like Cypress Hill came out, mm-hmm. like in the early '90s, where the people started like drawing into hip hop. So, yeah. but yeah, uh, so okay, so you're you're growing up, you're you're writing music. Now, what what uh I guess I, I know you you love the music, but what, what what were you expressing in the beginning? What 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 were your songs about back then? You know, like I guess uh, just like childish rhymes, a lot of bragging. Okay. You know, self self centered. Um why yeah. Just centered around that. Sometimes I would make songs up for fun. My da- my dad has videos of me on uh cassette tape <laughs> of me singing and play and playing the guitar. Okay. Like I didn't know what I was doing, but I would just strum my guitar, walk around in my pamper and, <laughs> and I would and I would sing gotcha. to, him, to him. Uh my father my father's uh plays guitar every Christmas. My family would they used to when my gra- great grandpa was alive sing Puerto Rican Christmas carols. Okay. And that being around that, you know, it just sparks that flavor yeah. of like, man, this is such a beautiful thing to create something from nothing. Yeah. To be able to design it however you want. So I, I you know, I play the saxophone in middle school but for some reason i've always just been called to just write gotcha i love to write music all right nice nice okay so i know you mentioned you started like in third grade now t- take us through like you like going into your teenage years how, how does life look for you like going into into those years you know yeah so gro- growing up um g- going into seventh eighth grade um Already starting, you know, knucklehead behaviors with with girls and things like that. So, um, lost my virginity at a young age, seventh grade, summer seventh grade. Um, started writing music. Started to go over my best friend's house to make music. We would record off a garage band mic and and we just put like some foam in his closet and we we would record and it was cool. And eventually, going into high school, that grew up grew into a group called We Are LOFA, right? L-O-F-A. It was an acronym. At the time, it stand for Legit Official Fly Always. Um, and we just started to create music and drop music videos. And uh, and it, it got pretty popular, right? We we s- surpassed over a million views oh, on, no our, way. on our YouTube. We had tons of subscribers. But it just wasn't the right time. Because dealing with all that caused friction in our friendship. And we were young. Like, oh, t- how old were you at this time? Man, probably 14, 15. Man. But I tell you what, we, we um, you know who Rhymefest is? So Rhymefest. Sounds familiar, yeah. But- Rhymefest wrote Jesus Walks for Kanye West. Oh, no way. Okay. So put it this how young and immature we were. We were on a live interview on 92.3. We released a single on the radio stations in Chicago. Rhyme Fest was there. He was very impressed with our music, pulled my best friend and I to the side, offered us a spot on his mixtape. Very prominent figure in the hip hop community. And we didn't send him a song because we just, we we were just so in la la land, you know, caught up in the pride and, and things like that. Um, And from there, the animosity between best friends, between brothers just kind of grew. And eventually it blew up and we decided to delete everything and go our separate ways. Oh, no way. They yeah. deleted the channel and everything? everything. Yeah. Man, what, what would you say was like the root or like the main cause of that? Um, like if, if, when you look back? I think it was the inability of having a mentor, of having someone to guide us on the correct path and how to handle those, how to handle that popularity so, so success and spotlight, right? Because we were 14, 15 years old getting paid $500 to show up to a party for an hour. 
and you know you do a party or two or three on a weekend you're making 1500 two grand and then on top of that we were making youtube money which back then it was a lot easier to make youtube money so then like we had money in our pockets at a young age and it, it caused friction you know or when like he would drop a song and get more positive reviews or i would drop a song and get more positive reviews it would cause friction gotcha. and we we just kind of lost due to you know being immature yeah, yeah. in our youth we lost the vision and the sight of why we started doing the music in the first place and and the group fell apart but you know now being so many years removed for right. it you're so so grateful because I don't know where I would be if if it did like go mainstream. Right. You know, I probably would have. You know, I would like to think I wouldn't, but I probably would have messed up my life. Yeah. Well, I got you. Especially, you know. Now, let me ask you this: Even back then, with that fifteen hundred in your pocket, fourteen, fifteen years old, what were you doing with that money? You know. Uh, we would uh, we would use it to to promote ourselves to buy merchandise to make more money. Um, a lot of late night runs to 7-Eleven, you know, to get um, like snacks and stuff. And and just there was times where I gave money to my parents. Um, so so did he. But very like not responsible. Yeah, yeah. No saving. Right. No nothing, you know. Gotcha. We just spent it while we got it. Gotcha. Okay. So okay, that 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 breaks up uh, uh, the you know the 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 group. Yeah. Where, where, where does your life head from there? Like where, so where? so I went and I started my own channel, started to drop music, but then it became different because this is something I'm doing with my best friend, and now all of a sudden it's so I'm back to my trauma, I'm back to my childhood of being alone again. And I'm doing something in music that is not fun to me anymore because I'm alone. And I've been alone all my life, I felt, right? So I'm trying to make this music. And eventually, I just got tired of it. And I stopped. And I went back to boxing. Hmm. So my first amateur fight, I was seven years old. I was always on and off. Oh, no way. In from, from seven years old? Yeah. Because uh, I know I you, mentioned I you, you started at five, right? Yeah, my father took me to the gym at five years old. My father was a professional boxer. Oh, no way. So that's why I got into it. And then at seven years old, I had my first amateur fight. I won at Curie. And then I was always on and off. You know, okay. Always in and out the gym. Yeah. Only in there when my dad was in there. So it wasn't like something super serious right, right. until I decided to step away from music. It was my junior year sophomore year oh, okay and then i went back to train boxing and i started to gain some momentum after a couple fights and in my junior year of high school i won the the power gloves which is a tournament that takes place in little village um and then i won the golden gloves oh no way and i won best boxer of the the tournament in 2014 and then i went to nationals in vegas and yeah, so so I started to have some success right. outside of music, and I didn't really feel alone anymore, you know, because because it was like, oh, okay, th th I struggled with that as a kid. I'm I'm making music in this very fragile years of my life, going through puberty and stuff, right. of getting all this attention because of my music, and then you know, losing the love for it. And it's like, oh, what's next? Where am I going to get that high from now? Where, where am I going to get that attention, that those followers, those likes and stuff? And so, you know, the boxing was providing that. And it, I, I lost, but boxing is a very unforgiving sport, right? Because you get punched in the face. You can't, <laughs> you can't treat it. You can't treat it 50%. Yeah, I got you. But, uh, either you're in or you're, you're, you're out right someone told me um boxing is like a jealous woman right if you don't give it all your attention right it's gonna break up with you and break your heart and I, break i've your had face, <laughs> yeah and break your face and i've had a couple of those moments and not now like i mean i'm in a place w in my life now where i have this foundation that's built on christ where mm. i'm able to 
know my identity in him and I'm able to pursue boxing and I'm able to drop music and nothing is attached. I don't care what comes of that because right. I know who I am in the father. Mm. And that's what's the most important thing to me now. Gotcha. Okay. So we're, we're, I, I want to get to there, but yeah, yeah. to tell us right, right before that change happens, you coming to Christ and finding your identity and, yeah. know, and knowing how, how did life look like, let's say maybe the, those last couple of years Man. before that. So life, life looked like, you know, fighting, winning, going out, partying, getting drunk, sleeping around. Even when I was in a relationship, being a knucklehead, you know, cheating. It's funny because I wasn't, I didn't dibble and dabble in the drugs mm. yet. Okay. Right. But, you know, I, I was drinking, I was in the clubs at 16, 17 years old. So I'll be in the clubs because my family were, was in charge of, of some of the nightclubs. So okay. I would just go to where they were in charge and they would let me in, right? So I was around that older crowd, older women, and, you know, dibbled and dabbled in all that stuff. Um, so, so that's how my life looked then. But I, but I always knew that my main focus was to never be broke and not to be alone, hmm. right? So st step one was, all right, how, how can I make money? And that was, you know, going to college and making sure I have a guaranteed job. Um, and the other thing of not being alone was that that's where I was trying to figure it out. Right. So so that's when, when like I was telling you before, I had all this stuff happening in my personal life where it was like, you know, moving a lot, financial sh uh, traumas and struggles, um, you know, abuse. I had um, death in the family, you know, ev um, foreclosures, evictions, like moving around um, and just trying to find this sense of stability again. Um, and it, it, it all started like, I remember my grandpa got diagnosed with cancer, you know, he, and my gran grandma got diagnosed with cancer and they both passed away and that was my dad's dad and my mom's mom oh man so, so our house got hit by this wave of depression and to this day i feel like we're we're barely rec we're finally recovering from that how, how many years ago what man, was this? it's like eight nine years and, so so it was like a, and, and you feel you're they're barely like like yeah like coming coming, coming back man. from that um it it was a hard time a hard season you know, burying all these people, but not only that, watching them take their last breath from my aunt to my grandma, cousin to grandpa to watching them take their last breath. And you just, you just look at them and, and you see this, this body that used to love you and, and care about you. And all of a sudden they're just gone. And then you feel their hands and it's, it's an empty vessel. And it's just like, they don't move and they don't talk and they're just cold and and you're like what what what's the point of all this you know what's the point of of life so that started started the curiosity in in a god gotcha now now at, at this point what was your i guess um perspective on life or like let's say a god like i guess prior to you like watching your family members pass away yeah i thought well, my great, like, in one of the songs on the tape is like, I first met the Lord through my abuela, right? So my abuela is my great grandma. And every time I would go over her house, she would, she spoke a lot of Spanish. Um, she would pr sign the cross, pray for me. And and she buried two, two or three of her kids and her husband. And she just had so much strength. And I just remembered her her praying all the time praying the rosary shit catholic okay right so that that is what stood in my head and so when i felt lost and i didn't know where to turn to i remembered my wella and i'm like man if she can have so much strength pursuing per, pursuing whatever this person is yeah, let me let God. me try yeah. it let me try it so so i 
And then in high school, okay. during the same time that I'm thinking of my grandma, I have a, an advisor, a mentor at the time, who introduced me to the Tao Te Ching, which is like Chinese scripture, li literature. Okay. And I'm reading that. Uh, and then I started to get into philosophers, took some philosophy classes in college, and just really started to broaden my horizon of what we are as, as people. Yeah. You know, so... Um, I did tons of research on all the, on all the religions. Okay. Cause I wanted to just know about them before deciding like which one called me, but it was always Jesus. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, what I'm even saying? in the midst of you yeah, like, man. searching. Always, there's always Jesus. So gotcha. Like, come home, come home, <laughs> you know? Right, right. Okay. So you say your family man suffer all this loss back to back. Uh, where did your life uh, head from there? Like after yeah, experiencing so, this for you, like personally. So we we um unfortunately because of that situation, you know, we lost the house, had to move, but um that a lot of anger, a lot of unresolved emotions, a lot of confusion for me, um, and my life looked a lot just numb. Just going through the motions. What's next? And I, I tell you, I can't remember college. I was like four years just like there and gone. I didn't do any programs, you know, after school. I was so locked in and focused. I was like, all I wanted to do is get my degree. I didn't really treat college like I was a student there. Okay. I didn't go to no parties. The only friends I had was people I talked to in class, and that was it. And I would just go to school, come home come back, just grind, 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 grind. Because my main focus was like what I told you in the beginning was not to be, be broke, broke and not to be alone, right? So it was like, I, I can't be broke. I, I got to figure this out. Got to. At that time, I was trying to be a savior, trying to play a savior, tr trying to play a God for like in finances, for my family, for people around me. And when you do that and put all that pressure on yourself, you lose yourself. Okay. So to put it short, that season looked a lot like me losing myself and not knowing who I was even more because on top of all that stuff, I turned to women, you know, and then um, repeating cycles of what I saw growing gotcha. up, you know, and that just created this slippery slope. Yeah. So, so you were all like just focused on the goal, and that's that was like your life. You were just driven to to accomplish that. Now, now let me ask you, what, what were you going to school for? Um, so I went to school for physical education. I'm a PE teacher. I teach pre K to eighth grade on Little Village. Um, I'm always loved sports. Sports was, you know, a calling. I didn't know what to do in in college. Again. I'm the first in my Im immediate family to be a college graduate. So I was in their uncharted territories. Yeah. I had I put myself through college. Oh, no way. You um, didn't get no scholarship? No. I did. I did okay. get scholarships. But I say I put myself because I earned those scholarships. Yeah, right? got you. Yeah. But then I also had a job since I was 15, busing tables. And I used that money to pay for my books and things like that. So I had to. I was so focused that that, that was the only thing. Whereas, like, I was so goal-oriented on, on not being broke yeah. and graduating and get and getting a job where everything else just kind of dissolved. Right. And at the same time, I'm boxing and I'm making money from my fights. And, and, and I'm, pursuing, I'm pursuing this career, but one foot in, one foot out because I'm also... I'm also a busboy, part-time manager on the weekend. I'm also a college student. And then I'm fighting these grown men, and I'm 19, 20 years old, and I lose a fight, and, and then my whole world comes crashing down. Mm. So it's just a lot going on. Yeah. You, you, let, 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 you know, can I ask you about that? Like uh, yeah. you said, with just one fight, like your world comes crashing down. Like how how does that, I guess, like I guess it's men, men, mental, right? Like uh, do you put so much like into it that you feel like a loss like it's like a devastation or how, how do you receive it i guess i think i think back then it's cool to think about because back then i'm so different now oh, right 
back then, it was my identity. Again, it always goes back to those two things, right? Not to be broke, not to be alone. Boxing gave me a sense of purpose and an identity. And when I lost, I felt like I wasn't living up to that. So when I looked at myself in the mirror and I and I lost, and the way that I lost was even worse. You know, I got stopped in the, in the first round. I, I you know, lo- lost myself even yeah. more. And then, but I, I would go to fight the same guy I lost to. I fought him again in a rematch and I beat him. But it was good, but like nothing was really solved. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I really didn't do the inner work. So I kept on this journey of of uh, pursuing something that was just going to hurt me in the long run. Gotcha. So wh- wh- where do you think you finally uh, found yourself? Like, uh, or I think, so, well, I know, yeah. um, eventually, you know, what's done in the dark will come to light, right? So all my, my wrongdoings and mi- misbehaviors while I was in, a relationship all came to light and my partner at the time had left, had had broken up with me. And then again, I'm back being alone, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to think about what's, what's this, uh, what's, why did I do this to myself? Yeah. Right. So I, I, again, went back to, the depression, but also more searching. It's like, okay, I got, I got to get out of this funk. I got to figure something out, you know. Um, and then I, like I was telling you before, I was called to to new life midway. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you you want to tell us how that happened? And like, um, yeah. So, so at this point, you're 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 not going to a church, right? You're no, 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 no. You, so, grew. So yeah, I was Catholic, yeah. but never really in the like, church. Like practicing, yeah, never really going nothing. or. Um, so going to DePaul in the mornings, I would always pass on the Pulaski. Okay. I, I would see this building and I would see people always in there. And when I hit my rock bottom, I felt called to go to this church. Now, let, let me ask you about that call. Uh, how, how would you explain it to somebody that's listening? Like what was uh, going on or like, what were just, you feeling? You it's know, a like, thought and an uncom- it's like an uncomfortable feeling that nags you and pokes at you and doesn't <laughs> leave you alone. And you're like, man. Why? Why am I? Why do I need to go there? Yeah. And you keep putting it off, but it never leaves you. So alone. you feel like almost pulled in that direction. Yeah. And, and this is without nobody inviting you there, right? No. You just like see the building, and you feel like I gotta yeah. go in there for some reason. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, again, Catholic growing yeah. up, so I walked in, and I remember seeing everybody dance <laughs> and like sing. I'm like, what is like? like at first, it was dope because I love music. Okay, right, right. So I, I, I liked it. I wasn't judging. Right, right. It was just different. Yeah. So I, you know, I sit down, you know, and then I turn and I see my godfather joins me. I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, I was just on the phone with him, uh, and he actually showed up. Yeah. He showed up for for this. That was little did I know it would be like a big event in my mm. life, right? And the pat the service was about the book of Joshua. From the book of Joshua, my name is Joshua. It was about overcoming your battles, and I was going through a battle. And I felt the spirit move in in my life that day. And that day, I went up to the altar, gave my life to Christ. Mm. Amen. What, what what would you say like began to happen in that moment? Like, ah, oh, man, it's a uh, it's it's a uh, breaking down of pride, breaking down of all the the tension of like walking around your entire life with your fist clenched when you release and and admit that you need a savior that you need him it's just like that's how i felt you know it's like when you're holding something so so tight and you just release and you feel that relief that's how i felt that day All right. so actually ex- accepting a savior instead of like you mentioned earlier trying to be the savior right like yeah. is it almost like a weight came off too like there's got to be a lot of pressure man to yeah like, like you mentioned be a savior not only for yourself but you were thinking about your family too right like yeah yeah but a hundred percent because the the weight 
now you have a choice, right? When you when you give your life to Christ, that's just the beginning. You know, you're saved, but it's just the beginning. You have to learn his character, learn who he is as a person. And so you can build that relationship with him. And then through that relationship is what leads you to change. But my error was I, I didn't get discipled. I didn't have a mentor. I just got baptized and kind of forgotten about. So whenever I hit um, a dark season, I went back to my old ways. And at that time, I was still trying to be Superman, still trying to be the provider, still trying to do all of those things for, for people in my life. Yeah. And it just kept, it was like a boat sinking and i was like and when you give your life to christ in your mind and you don't know how to be obedient in your walk you start to get angry at god oh why is nothing changing why am i feeling the same way why am i going through the same emotions uh feeling frustrated angry anxious depressed right and it's just like i kept sinking and i was so so angry with everything and everyone in my circumstances. And what made me even more angry was that they would look at me and tell me that I'm crazy, that I was the one, that I had the problem. And that drove me insane. Now, who, who, who are, who's they? Just like my family, okay. people that, that I was surrounded with yeah, at yeah. that time. Like, oh, that I'm tripping or I'm bugging out. It was like, they couldn't see from my perspective in my shoes. So I went what I I continued to stumble for three years. Okay. First three years. Right, right. Of being a Christian following yeah, yeah, Christ. Yeah. I had seasons where where I went back to, you know, womanizing. Um I had seasons where for the first time I did drugs. You know, I did psychedelics. Okay, and this is after uh, after, it, after I gave saying my life a prayer. To Christ, dude, gotcha, after okay. I gave my life to Christ. Yeah, 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 you know? right. And I went and I did all these things because I was still searching because yeah. I still felt alone, but I wasn't obedient and I wasn't following. I wasn't living life the way God called me to live it. So doing that, it's you you say you follow you follow Christ with you confess but it has to be followed with some action steps yeah. you know and i just didn't have those action steps gotcha so, so okay you say you stumbled for three years yeah what 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 do you feel uh, brought about a change that uh, so two two major events first major event um my first couple weeks into being a member at new life midway i met my now wife, Janessa, I met her at at service, and her and I talked. She actually knew my brother. She was like, "Hey, how's Gio doing?" I was like, "Gio, Gio's doing well." Is your, your your younger brother? My younger okay, yeah, brother, okay. yeah. And we we uh, just kind of hit it off, started talking, started dating, and eventually, a couple years went by, and I proposed, and we were engaged. And I did not know how to lead. I did not know what it was to be a, a man of God, right? Again, I felt like I was a, I had a lot of immaturities and I wasn't a grown man responsibilities with um, an immature mind. Gotcha. So, so we ended up breaking up and dissolving the engagement. And then it was just like, okay, I give up. I give up, you know. Um, before, bef the second thing that that caused this new rock bottom was I went to, um, I took a fight on a couple of days notice because I was in such bad debt that I needed the money. And they called me, offered me a big purse in the UK to fly out. No way. To fight to fight this guy. So I took the fight. I got there Wednesday and I fought Saturday. And the jet lag was just really bad. Yeah. <laughs> but not only that, it was more the nerves. The like, man, I'm 
Monday, I'm watching the Cubs game. Sunday night, I'm watching the Cubs game. Wednesday, I'm on zone in Eddie Hearn's backyard about to fight in the in the co-main event. Wow. <laughs> and I'm just like... Now, are, are you flying out there by yourself? Did well, you me, have my dad, and, and Janessa okay. flew, flew out there. So, you know, I, I just couldn't get... I couldn't get the fear out of me that that day. I yeah. was in such a fearful state that I let myself down. I yeah. beat myself. I walked into the ring um, like a deer in headlights, and and I don't even remember nothing. Gotcha. I don't remember. All I remember is um, falling in the locker room because there was water on the floor. And after that, everything's blank, hmm. you know? Because I was so nervous, yeah. you know, and so I I go I lose in a round to a guy who's a world champion now, but I come come back home, and then my and then then I I know I went out of order, but okay, right. but then I come home and then I get engaged, right, and then the engagement ends. So now I'm right. sitting there like, man, I don't want to box anymore. I'm not making music. I don't have a wife or or a fiance. I don't have anything. You know, um, all I had at the time was the house I bought with the with money from a previous fight, and I'm sitting in there and and I'm just like something has to change. No, are you in this house by yourself? This yeah. It, It, so it's a three flat. Okay. I had moved my family in. To, gotcha. Okay. To help. Yeah, but, but they're in different floors. Right? Yeah, but I'm in the second floor, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just like, something has to change. And I started to go back to church at, at Midway, and eventually I found myself in a um, Bible study on Wednesdays, met my mentor, Eddie, and he mentored me for a year. And I I was finally comfortable with being by myself during this time and pursuing God and being in his word and getting to know who he is and why he loves me and replacing the lies in my mind with his truth, right? Meditating on scriptures and understanding how much he loves me, how much he cares about me, and he wants me to be free, not cap not held captive right. by the thoughts of the enemy. So... I remember I just let everything go. Mm. I didn't need to make music anymore. I didn't need to box. I didn't need to be in a relationship. And I looked at myself and I was just happy. You know? I I didn't need anyone or anything or any validation from anybody. I was just like, man. I I felt like I made it to this this peace and bliss in life where i was like okay what's next what's next lord all i all i need is you like no matter where i go from this point on it's going to be you by with you and my family doesn't understand it right. friends don't understand it but little by little when you walk with this character and they see christ in you they start to gravitate towards you. Right. So I've had my best friend get saved, the same one I made music with. Oh, no way. So he came to Christ. I have I have family members starting to ask me for like Bible study or advice about the Bible. You know, God, is, God starts to poke at different people's hearts. Yeah. And the best thing of all was I got back with my, with Janessa We got reengaged and we got married last yeah. year in July. And it was proof to me of what God does in your life when you surrender yeah. and be obedient to the way he's called us to live. Right, right. No, for sure. Yeah. Now, what what, what, what would you say changed? Um, I know you say you drew closer to God. He, he, you said you were fulfilled in him, satisfied, just man, just having you, Lord. How how did that translate into your re, uh, relationship? Like what changed in you that you brought to the relationship that made it different, I guess, that, than before, you know? Yeah, it it was, 
we're all just vessels of our childhood. And if you never address your childhood and the issues and the traumas that you face as a child, you will never grow. Yeah. So we have some grown men in their 40s and 50s and older that can't grow because they never went back to that kid. You know, we have to remember that we're God's child. And unfortunately, as a child, we couldn't control the things that were done to us, you know. And I had to readdress those things. And when I readdressed those things, the Lord put them all on the table. It's like, okay, you have an issue with your with your pride. You have an issue with lust. You have an issue with um with your tongue, right? With how you speak to people. And then he uses your partner to bring those things out of you. You know? Yeah. And and they're even highlighted even more. So now it's like, man, okay. This is a continuing issue in my relationship because of me. And you learn to take responsibility yeah. for those things. And then you're like, okay, Lord. Then you learn, then you get to a point where you're just, you ask yourself, why am I doing this this way? Right? So like one thing was for me growing up, it was just straightforward, straight up. You just say how you feel. Okay. You know, Blunt. Like no, no, no filter, no, no, no care just, for how it's going to affect the person that's nope. going to listen nope. to your words. That's just, that's just how I was raised. That's how I grew up. And I would, I would, uh, just say how I felt. Yeah. And for some people, they're not used to that. No, no. Right. You know, like my, my parents and my, my family, they're used to that. But you know, my wife wasn't, no, she wasn't. And When I when I acted out of pocket or I started saying those things like that, then she I would speak I was speaking death over our relationship. Yeah. And she she God used her to teach me not to do that. Right. So I'm not perfect. It's right. still something that, that I work on. Yeah. But it's something that I'm more mindful about, something that I try to be more aware of now. So that's one thing that changed. Right. Um, another thing that changed was like realizing that a relationship is, it take it takes two, Yeah, you know, like I, I work, you know, my wife owns a business, uh, shout out to Decolotus Beauty Bar. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, go ahead. Hey, where, 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 where's it <laughs> yeah, at? Where, where, where is that business it's about? A, it's on Archer. I think it's 5674 Archer Avenue. Um, it's right across the street from the Wendy's and the Chase. Right oh, okay, no way. That city's L office, city of Chicago office. L Clark. Laramie, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laramie. Or an archer. So her business, she provide it's everything. It's a one stop shop beauty bar. It's everything: nails, lashes. Um, we'll, we'll put a hair. link on there on the yeah. on, on the podcast. Bro. So so everything. Um, man, for I forgot what I was at with that <laughs> with that shout out. No, that you you were, you were talking uh, about the the things that change. I know. You yeah, 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 yeah. So. It was it was a continuing continuing thing because then the Lord grows some things in your life, like being more patient. Or I wasn't raised with learning how to use tools. <laughs> I didn't know how to be a handyman. Yeah. But I got married and my wife bought me a drill. I was like, you're gonna learn today, <laughs> right? So <laughs> there was a season in my life where we got married and in my building where we're going to move to the basement and I gutted it out by myself and I learned how to build it back up and no I learned way. how to, and I learned how to stop the water from coming in from outside and, and just learning how, how to fix and hang things and use different tools. And to the point where she opened her shop just in February and I did, and I hung up everything. I did all the work in there. No way. From, from from not from growing up not knowing how to do this. Yeah. To the Lord saying, Trust me, use YouTube <laughs> and, and and learn your way. Hey, hey, you know what's crazy? You know what I think about like in the old testament, you know, when God called people, it said that he he sent his spirit. They had right. the, the Holy Spirit enabled them to do certain things in the in, in building building stuff, man. Like mm. so I believe God even supernaturally 100%. like empowers people to To do stuff they didn't even know how to do, you know? I'll tell you what. When I went to this, when I went to the basement and 
I knew I had a couple months to fix this basement so my wife and I could move in there um, after our wedding. I was alone. And again, two things, right? Can't be broke, can't be alone. <laughs> but because I know Christ now, I looked at that basement and I said, can, can't do nothing to me. It's not, it, it, you can't stop me. Yeah. You know, you can't stop me. The, the thoughts of a fear of failure, you can't stop me. So I, I grabbed my little, my little tools, started knocking down walls and, and we got, we got the job done. So Man. things like that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like the Lord, the Lord changes your life in that way. And the last thing I would I would say from it's a proverb like be careful what you think your life is shaped by your thoughts yeah right that's the biggest change because I was my biggest enemy because when you spend a lot of time alone you're constantly beating yourself up yeah, constantly in your mind right yeah all the time fat daydreaming fast of uh, uh, fascinating about different things and different scenarios and woulda shoulda coulda have like replaced all I did, sort of dude. yeah. So all I did as a kid, that's why I think I could write such good music because I, my life has always been a story in mm. my mind, you know? Um, so being, being at that point and just being, being able to, to do that stuff just led to, to this huge amount of breakthrough for me. Right. So Man, you know, I, I want to go back to the, To, to the marriage and, and your wife revealing certain things to you. Yeah. How, how long have you been married? Um, not even a year yet. <laughs> that's that that's honestly amazing, man, for, for all that yeah. to be to be able to to like you said, like realize what's wrong with me. Because a lot of times it's easy to point the finger. Yeah. Like you if it weren't for you acting like that, I wouldn't be acting like this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like like putting the the blame on our spouse. For why we react the way we react, right? But uh, I, I love what you said that you put your stuff on the table, man. Like, no, this is what what's going on with me, you know. Like in, individually, yeah. like inside, and I think it's important for men to to know that, man. Like to yeah, because you can't, I can't control my wife, right? All I can do is lead, and learning how to lead was learning that I can't just say it; I have to do it. I have to be active, right? If if I want the house to look a certain way, I have to help. Yeah. I just can't say, "Hey, this needs to get done." No, you you have to lead and you have to do 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 these things because then eventually they see you and then they're like, "A woman just wants to be with her man." You know, that that they they want to be nurtured and loved and and tended to yeah. by their man so when they see their man doing things in, in their head they just want they gravitate towards that you know and i learned that i learned that because you know one day I, a couple of times i'm doing dishes or cleaning you know the kitchen and then who who's right there beside me my wife mm. you know and i When I start the dishes, she's not there. But by the time I'm on the third or fourth dish, she's right next to me. And we're doing it as a team, right? Because I chose to lead right. in that aspect. So I know, I know like we're new, still young right. in, our, in our marriage. Not young in our faith, though. Okay. Right? I'm not on, I'm not on uh, milk. I'm, I'm on the, the, the big meat. How, how, how would you explain <laughs> that? Because the spirit, spiritual milk is what yeah. you need when you're a baby in, in the faith, you know, and, and you're constantly slipping up and you don't truly understand. But I, I feel like my relationship with God is so divine, like he's so divine and I understand his character that I spend time with him daily. I, I pray throughout the day. I meditate in the word every morning, um, repeat scriptures in my head. Like there are certain scenarios that happen that I can't control. And the first thing that comes to my mind is be Christ-like, you know, like this morning I'm leaving Dunkin' Donuts and a lady hits me 
Dude. It hits my car. And my whole front of my car is like just totaled. But my first reaction is, right, for lack of a better term, is like to get gangster because that's how I was raised. Okay. Right? That's how, yeah, yeah. That's how I was that, raised. That was so it's just like my first reaction is like, but then be Christ-like. So I had to take a deep breath, pull over, get out of my car, go to go to her, the the lady. The first thing I tell her is like, "Are you okay? You know, are you okay? Um, do you need me to call anybody for you? How can I help you? I'm sorry that this happened. Um, what do you need me to do? Because I was okay. She was yeah. freaking out, right? So instances like that." Right, that 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 shows the growth of like yeah. not being on that milk yeah. anymore, and you start to see the fruit yeah. grow in your life, and you start to see your calling into different um, different um, scenarios where the Lord wants you to be. And then what I what I get fascinated even more is like when the Lord calls you to something and you go to pursue it, the enemy comes from like all angles and tries to prevent it yeah so when i feel the attacks of the enemy i know i'm going in the right direction yeah <laughs> right definitely yeah that's that's, that's what i tell people when if, if the enemy's not coming at you you're probably not doing what god's calling you to do you know but mm -hmm. you, you you know what uh in, in what ways do you feel the enemy comes at you like what are some of because uh, usually he'll come at mm -hmm. us in a certain area or all the time finances all the time because I'm growing in my faith with trust in the Lord with my finances. I know that the God that the Lord will provide, but um, I still feel a little insecure in that area because of of trauma. Gotcha. Childhood trauma. You, you know? said like a foreclosures and things yeah. like that in in the history. You gotcha. Yo. Of of my, you know, not without getting into too much detail, oh, right. but yeah, de dealing with that stuff from growing up and and it was hard. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, it, it 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 was very hard, you know. Um, and the beginning of my walk to be like, where were you at, God? Where were you at when this was unfolding? Yeah. But sometimes that season wasn't for you. I was just I was just a part of someone else's season. You know, God could have been teaching someone something how to trust him more and i was just a child a yeah. part of someone else's story you know um but yeah that the enemy definitely attacks me uh with finances and with self-doubt and and thinking that uh i'm less than mm. and, uh, and alone right um So in the, in those instances, the way I combat that is just by staying grounded in my word and meditating on verses. You know, so a man, what a man thinketh, so is he, right? Right. So if I sit here and I think about the truth, then I'm gonna the the, the way I think about his man is like the way you think affects how you feel, and the way you feel affects how you act. Yeah. So if I can control my thoughts. Then I can control my emotions. I think the way they put it is from the mind to the heart, like into action, right? And then, and my emotions yeah. lead me to act a certain way. Yeah. And the Lord is all, the Lord is controlling all of that when I choose to surrender to Him and pick up my cross daily. Amen, amen. Yeah. You know, I know you mentioned uh, you read, uh, you read the Bible daily. That's the, you got to do it. No, no, on TikTok, I seen you like, bro. Recently, you've been doing like every day, like yeah, verse of the day, you, yeah. You know. So, so I started um for my music, right? I I released a project called Care Package. I'm in February last month, um, and it's out on all streaming platforms, and it is it was like my return to music, but it's like a rebirth because now it's Christian rap, where I was more making secular music back in the day. So, that, you know, let, let, let me ask you what I know you say you, you gave that up, you gave up like boxing, you gave up the music, yeah. What, like, 
I guess, pushed you or how did you know it was time to get back into music this time around? Through fasting. Through well, fasting. How, how does a, a, a fasting look for people that, a lot of oh, people man. probably hear the word. Yeah, well, yeah. How does fasting look for, for you? Like, well, what exactly so, do you do? So for me, um, last year, after the three-week fast that we had at, at for yeah, yeah. life, right? I fasted every week for about six months. Uh, twice, what, Friday? A couple times a week. So so you did the three weeks and then... And I kept going. And, and you fasted... For six more months. <laughs> it, the, the whole week or just on Friday? Just, just, just a couple of days. Okay, got you. Yeah. So, so you so did the three like weeks. The whole week. so you, I did the three weeks. And then the following and, weeks... And then did. the following weeks, I would do like Thursday, Friday. Got you. Okay. And through that fast... Uh, the way it looked for me was like, you know, not eating anything, just drinking water on Friday, all day Friday. But I would be in my word, read my word, pray to God. Um, and then they say like when you're hungry, you're more you're more like likely to blow up and less in control of your emotions. Uh, 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 hangry. <laughs> hangry. Yeah, right. And I'm working with kids. Right at the middle school. Yeah. So I'm working with kids and and just starting to like, okay, God, I need to lean on you. I need you. I need you. I need you in this in this. If I'm gonna fast and you know deal with the kids and all their emotions and whining, I need to find a way to depend on you to not react in anger. Because the kids in that community, that you know, that's what they know. I don't yeah. want to be. Um, I don't want to be like a mirror of what they're yeah the probably seeing at home right yeah, yeah. so I'm like I want to be different so I felt the Lord growing me and make me more patient and then and then that knock started to come where it was like okay the door for music started to open up and the Lord was truthfully telling me like I want you to make music for me now and then after the UK fight. That call for boxing was was to like, okay, I want you to go to this gym this time and train with these people. And I don't care how anyone else feels. I want you to listen to me, Josh. That's how I felt. Listen to me. Who cares about everyone else's emotions? Be obedient to me and I shall make your path straight. So I went and I did exactly what he told me to do. And it's not like the 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 mount I haven't reached a mountain top or a peak or anything yeah. yet, but it doesn't matter because I'm I'm you're on the path. I'm on the following path. them. I'm on the path, right? So now look, I'm fighting April thirteenth, Rosemont, Illinois. I have a, a a project out, music, and for the first time in my life, my two things that I love have met. Mm. For the first time, I've never done both at at the same time. And for the first time, they've met and and they've intertwined. And that's how that's how um, when you're obedient, the Lord the Lord speaks to you because yeah. He knows you'll listen. So making music, boxing, and then. All of a sudden, I get this feeling like this is not enough. I can't. I don't want to be. I don't want to keep, you know, just making up songs um, with no meaning behind them. It's a, I want my music to take time and meaning. But how am I going to engage my followers? Okay. And the Lord, the Lord was just like, you're in your word. <laughs> you're in your word every morning, you know. So go through, read the scriptures pick a scripture that sticks out to you, break it down to to the, your followers. And man, dude, when I tell you that the Lord is working yeah. and I and I feel like I found my ministry, it's insane because the messages I get from people all over America messaging me. I I know you probably get the same, right? About like being suicidal, mm. heavy stuff, heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. 
friends that come up to me in the gym or that text me like, man, dude, your verse of the day really helped me, has been really inspiring me. I don't care if I get 10 views. It's not about the viewership. Yeah. It's about being obedient. Yeah. And doing that and seeing the fruit develop in other people's lives where I have people that follow me that are not believers. And and that's yeah. so cool to me. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Hey, you know what? Could, could you share what's the the um the platform or Yeah, like- so on Instagram, uh Instagram and YouTube. It's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I don't know how long TikTok will be around for, but but those three things, it's it's Freedom Chicago. So I T S F R E E D O M Chicago. So it's Freedom Chicago on everything. So even on my music streaming platforms is under the same thing. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now you know what I you feel ready to do some music right now, man? Yeah, we could do it. All could right, do yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I had told them, man, I I've never had nobody on here, you know, like do any any rap. So I had a, I sent you a text earlier like, man, I, I would love for you to do that right now. So we're gonna try to connect. Are you just tell me how how, how loud do you want it? Like, you can put it up yeah. a little louder. I've been a dominant in a- All right, that's good. Right there? Yeah. Alright, it's Freedom Chicago on all streaming platforms. Yeah. Yeah. I've been a diamond in the dirt for a while Covered by the pressure, I've been trying to hold it down Now waiting for my time to come around I've been working, stuck up in a place where I got my mind hurting I've been overthinking, stuck up in the season Everybody winning, i just been peeping Thinking when it's my time, when I make my climb Will I get my shine when it's gonna be fine? Working on my mental, gotta get it to a line Praying for the good, God open up the blinds Let me see into the future when I'm stepping to my prime Know the hard times worth it cause it build you when you rise You know the spirit gon' grow when you go through phases So you gotta keep faith when you hit them changes Here for a purpose, I'll all be worth it Gotta let your light shine through all times we working You know the spirit gon' grow when you You know the spirit gon' grow when you you know the spirit gon' grow when you go through phases So embrace some changes Cause I can't be selfish, it's bigger than me Had to humble myself, had to turn a new leaf Had to learn to take my time when you lean to see He been digging the roots and it's embedded in me Looking back at all the days when I didn't believe Moving mountains, I was thinking it's a soldier in me I was taking all the credit like I got it for free But he can't even pay the price, so I'm joining the team Laying back on the mattress, giving him my passions Doing for your good is my only satisfaction and it's all about the action Walking in the spirit Living life while it passes So blessed, no stress Gotta give it all to you Lift the weight off my chest, man It's all progress I've been dying in my flesh Had to cut up all the nonsense You know the spirit gon' grow When you go through phases So you gotta keep faith When you hit them changes Here for a purpose or all be worth it Gotta let your light shine Through all times we working You know the spirit gon' grow When you you know the spirit gon' grow when you You know the spirit gon' grow when you go through phases So embrace some changes Hey man, hey man, man Thanks for that, brother No problem yeah, What for... was the, uh, the name of this song right here? So this song is called uh, Phases And it's the first song on the project And it's basically A calling for the hard times Because it's in through those times That you change Because the spirit grows in you Right. So the spirit going to go when you go through phases. So embrace some changes. Right. If you know you're walking in obedience and, and in obedience and, you know, you know, you're you're you have a repentant heart and you're you're pursuing the father. It's not a guarantee that everything's going to be perfect all the time. So when times are tough, it's more to be like, OK, this is just a phase in my life right now and I'm going to walk through it. With my head held high, and I know that whatever comes of this is just gonna make me better and lead me to a, a better place and being more like Christ. So that's what the song's about. Hey man, hey man, brother. No, that that's that's deep, man. Yeah. I mean, you say you're 28 year, years old, right, man? Yeah. I mean, but your level of maturity, man, is like beyond your years. I would say, man, and that that's something that a lot of people need to hear, man, because a, a lot of people come to to Christ and they think, man, Jesus, man, I'm gonna come to him. And everything's gonna be okay. He's gonna turn, you know, yeah. my life around. He's gonna restore my marriage or whatever it is the the reason that drew him there. And when things don't work out for him, they just walk oh, away almost away. like, like what, what 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 would you say to somebody that man maybe feels disappointed at God? You know, like man, you haven't fixed whatever it is. 
Yeah, I was there. I was there. I felt disappointed. Um, but the motivating factor is when you're in community, and when you're around other believers, and you see his movement in their lives, you know that it's real. Hmm. And you know that that can happen for you too. And God does not call us to walk in this life alone. He calls us to walk a, as a church yeah. in, in a community. And when the, the issue is, is that when people go through these challenges, they separate themselves and they're no longer attached to the body of Christ. And I feel like being in the body of Christ shows you that like, if I just stick this through, my time will come too, you know? And you hear stories from other believers and other brothers and they, and you realize, you, you realize like, man, okay, I, I can get there too. You just have to put in the work. Yeah. And the biggest thing, man, I would say is like, put your pride and selfishness to the side and admit that you need help hmm. and that you need the guidance because we for when I'm weak, I'm made strong, right? Amen. Through the Lord. Yeah. God makes us strong. We can walk around as tough as we want to, but it's not gonna get us anywhere. Right. You know? Yeah. I think for men that's to ask for help, mm -hmm. to to admit weakness in any area, that's like an unheard of, you know, but that's where they're gonna find breakthrough. I know you mentioned uh, uh, embracing a uh, uh, community. How how easy or hard was that for you, being oh. that 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 you were like okay by being oh, with man, yourself, you know? Yeah. I don't I don't like nobody. <laughs> I'm straight. Oh no, yeah, yeah, go ahead yeah. to talk about it, man. Hey man, I didn't like I didn't like nobody. I didn't have a judgmental heart. I just didn't like anybody. Um, I was cool with people, you know, for from, the, from, from a distance, like. dude. Three, three, <laughs> the first couple of years, yeah. years at church, you know. I remember when when my wife and I were in our dating phase, wanting to get a mentor couple. I was okay. like, nah, <laughs> nah, this we're not doing that. You know? <laughs> but eventually, did you do it or not? Of no? course. Okay, okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, and but it's funny because the first time we did it didn't work out. We got a mentor couple, and it's just like yeah, it wasn't didn't click. Not or, because of the mentor; no, they no, were yeah. amazing. Yeah. The mentor couple, the mentor couple are amazing, and we love them. We just so weren't ready, thing. but we just weren't yeah, like yeah. I wasn't used to it, or like uh, going to events, hanging out with people. You know, my wife and I are like on the ends of the spectrum, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm over here. I'm cool just chilling. Yeah, yeah. And more of an introvert. Right. But I like to talk to people. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes. <laughs> her, her, she she gets energized yeah. through being uh, extroverted by talking and being in community. So I feel like the Lord brought us together um, for me to teach her like, hey, you have all these friends, but no deep relationships. You know, like that, that's a recipe for disaster when you're going through a season. You're not going to have no one to lean on because you're just friends with a bunch of r random people. Yeah. Right. With me, it was like, well, when she was like, when you go through a hard season, you just have yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was my issue. And, through through our relationship, we we taught each other how to be better in in the community. Yeah, you know when I remember when when our engagement and that was one of my prayers uh, to the Lord to bring in a group of brothers that I can grow with yeah. in my walk. And He brought me. I hosted a Bible study at my house, which okay. I've never done anything like that. I had three brothers come out. Um, who've been in the faith way longer than me, so I'm learning a lot from yeah. them. Um, and now, two years later since that meeting, now we have our own Bible group with like 15, 16 guys deep, and we meet twice a month. 
Wow. So you see like yeah, how yeah. the Lord works and like <laughs> that little that little click of guys now it's like they come out to my fights, they come out to another brother's fights, another brother in the group who fights. We just show, show support for one another and right. and that happens through community. We yeah. have a group chat where we pray for each other, pray for one another. That's something that I never had. Right. In my in my life. So now, do, do you feel this is key? Like as far as I know you're you're growing in your faith, you're doing all these things for God. Do you feel that community uh, has had a big impact in oh, that? Oh man, for sure, for sure. When like so, okay, I'm fighting in April, right? April thirteenth, right? I'm gonna have a lot of people from church be there, and it's cool f f to have that love and that support, and it means so much to me uh, to have them there. But not only that, when I'm going through a tough season, knowing that I have people I can call, I have brothers that I can bond with her or, or yeah. hang out i i have i could have guys nights out where where they're not gonna push me to do to get drunk or do stupid yeah. things it's like we're all like-minded you know right and i think that's that's so important amen and you know what speaking of the fight uh if somebody wants to go see it where, yeah. where can you get tickets where's so, the venue at um you can hit me up on um so my name is Joshua Hernandez. You can just message me on any uh, social media platform. Um, I have tickets that I'm selling. They're fifty dollars for general admission tickets. Uh, it's located in Rosemont, Illinois. At at the Dome in Rosemont. It's April thirteenth. Doors open at I think six thirty seven, seven o'clock. So it's a cool cool thing to do. Uh, it's a Saturday night. Right. You know, to get out with the guys, watch them boxing. No, yeah, no, no, for sure, man. Yeah. That that's good. Uh, a, a, anything else that, that you want to share that maybe we didn't get a chance to touch on? Maybe a word or something you wanted to share with those that are listening? Um, maybe something God's placed on your heart recently, or man, <laughs> okay, I, I'm not trying to offend nobody, but but this <laughs> is something that's been on my heart. Yeah, I. This is, this is interesting. I'm a physical education teacher, and I'm in charge of teaching health in schools. Um, if you are a parent, and especially a believer, a parent of a believer, really pay attention to what they're teaching your kids in health in our schools because it's not what you think it is. It's no longer brushing your teeth what to eat, sugar, it's nothing. It's literally weeks and weeks and weeks of LGBTQ stuff, you know? So as a teacher, as an instructor, I look at all of these things and I understand the love and the acceptance, but when it's becoming eight to nine weeks of teaching the same thing and I only have 10 weeks of health, I think that becomes problematic. Because when am I supposed to teach these kids, you know, who I have a lot of Venezuelans who live in shelters. When am I supposed to teach them how to take care of themselves, right? Some of them don't even have parents. When to apply deodorant, washing your clothes, talking about, you know, um, relationships, the effects of drugs, the effects of alcohol, um, the effects of peer pressure. If the effects of just all those things, it's like it's completely dissolved and and it's gone, and it's been replaced by this new this new curriculum that that you know CPS has designed. So I just think that as as parents, um, you know, not knocking anyone for their opinion or their beliefs, like teach his own, but. Just pay attention to what your kid is being taught in school. You know. Got it. Yeah. Now, for a parent, how how can they do that by looking at the curriculum? By uh, well, yeah, they how, how they, they send. Like, know, so you know? they'll send um, before health starts. They're supposed to send a sheet home with the kid to for their parent to sign. You could sign it for your kid to get removed from those classes. Okay, um, but. I will say the sheets are very vague. Yeah. They, they won't be in yeah, detail to yeah. what they're actually going to be teaching yeah, them, right? Yeah, so it's, it's very vague. So 
when you know that health is being taught, you know, don't be afraid to have that conversation with your kid. Like, what what do you learn in health today? Or what do you, you know, did you have PE today? Well, what did you learn? You know, um, cause yeah, it's, it's worse than you, what you think. Oh, no way. Now, at, at what ages are, are they already like teaching these kids this? What, what ages Pre, are they? Pre K. Pre K to eighth grade. And yeah, it, it takes away your, your breath a little yeah. bit because it's like, I, I mean, I understand. I love, like, I have friends no, yeah. in the LGBTQ community that I love. My, you know, my barber, my engineer, my music. I love them. Yeah. But just like, for me, it's like, let kids be kids. Yeah. And they don't need to know what's going on in your bedroom. Yeah. Because the curriculum is teaching. It's very. It's teaching them what's going on in the bedroom. And it's like, for what? Yeah. You know? At that young age, what they're basically corrupting their minds. Yeah, I yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's something that, that's on my heart. Um, I just wanted to share. So. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, and, and you know what? Usually I, I ask our guests to, to close us out in a yeah. prayer, man. And maybe your prayer could relate into, even to that area. Whatever God places in your heart, brother, you know, go ahead and. Cool. Uh, All right. Um, thank you, Father God, for, for tonight, Lord. Uh, thank you for having me here on the Wrong to Strong podcast, Lord. I'm very grateful for the conversations with my brother Omar here. Um Grateful that I can just look back in my life and see how far that you brought me, God. And I just pray that some aspect of my story can touch the hearts of any listener that can inspire change and true repentance and true uh, turnaround from from the life that we used to live, Father. That they can start to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that they can feel um, your presence in their lives, God, and they can know that following you is not uh, never was and never will be a mistake that you can just place your hands on them uh, and and uh, renounce all the feelings of depression and anxiety and frustrations and fears and feeling like they're less than and, and worthless father i just pray that uh, this podcast becomes a platform for people to continue to listen and and find christ and find the strength in christ and to learn to just walk in obedience and share the love of the of the holy spirit father i also want to pray over our youth um i want to pray over over any uh infiltration from movies to to video games to uh our surroundings to teachers to to parents that could even um install negative thoughts in children lord uh, my heart is always with the kids i love kids i've dedicated a big part of my career and part of my life to kids, Father, because that is some place that you've called me to work in, Lord. And I just pray that you protect them, God, that you protect them and and allow them to find find you on their own and and allow them to be around parents that show them the, uh, the righteous way, Lord. And we thank you and we love you and we pray this in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Thanks, brother. Man. Hey, thanks for being on here. You know what? Well, before we, we close out, could you share those social media links? Yeah, yeah. And, and anything else, you know, like where people can find you again. So, so you can go to my music page. It's Freedom Chicago. I T S F R E E D O M Chicago. Um, on in on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Um, and from there, you will be able to find my boxing page and everything else because I have two separate pages. So. Okay. But I rather go to the music page as Freedom Chicago and follow along with my verse of the day that I do um, almost daily. <laughs> Some days I miss. All right. Yeah. But um, yeah, that, that's where they can find me. All right. And once again, plug your wife's business, man, before yes. we wrap up. Yes. Um, on Archer. Uh, 5674 South Archer Avenue, Decalotus Beauty Bar. Um, One-stop shop for all your beauty needs. So uh, be sure to reach out, book your appointment, and um, lovely, God-fearing people. Uh, a lot of craziness goes on in the shop, too. <laughs> but you know, Fun, though. Fun. Yeah, right? fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loving people that are going to take care of you and make sure you have a good time. So uh, be sure to book your appointments with them. Yeah, man, man. Thanks, brother. And with that, we're going to get ready to, to, to wrap up. 
I want to thank my guests for being on here uh, tonight. Uh, Matthew 4.16 reads, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Alongside my brother Joshua Hernandez, I'm Omar Calvillo. We are Wrong to Strong. <laughs> <laughs>